Greetings and welcome to Mount Carmel United Methodist Church's online Sabbath service for January 17th. I'm George Kirk, one of the lay servants here at Mount Carmel, and I'm very happy you were able to join us today. I would especially like to welcome any newcomers who may be visiting us. If you would like to know more about Mount Carmel, contact information will be provided later in the service. As we begin our service, please try to put your earthly concerns aside for a while. Take a deep breath and take refuge in the presence of our Lord. Our first song of praise is Open Up the Heavens. Please join me in a prayer for our country. Dear God, our hearts are full of thanks and praise for you today. You have been so good to us by heaping earthly blessings on many of us and literally saving our very lives through your grace. We praise you because you are the one and only God, the source of all that is good in all creation. Heavenly Father, our country needs your help. Our people are suffering and dying from a strange new disease that only seems to be getting worse. Even those who have not been infected are having their lives 
livelihoods, and relationships severely disrupted. Though we may not deserve your help, we pray that we, you will use your miraculous powers to get us out of the mess we're in. Help our caregivers by giving them safe, keeping them safe, and guiding them in their work. Hone their skills and energize them to greater heights and give them strength to deal with the suffering and death that surrounds them. Lord, as we prepare to celebrate the birth, life, and leadership of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, remind us of the effective nonviolent methods he used to effect change. Remind us that there is power in peaceful protest and civil discourse. Soften the hearts of all violent extremists. We are a divided nation, dear God. We have racial divides, ethnic divides, linguistic divides, cultural divides, geographic divides, and political divides. Though we will always have differences, help us to reconcile us to each other. Help us to stop yelling at each other and start listening to each other so that we may finally be one nation under God indivisible and help us to realize that there is no room in this country for supremacists of any kind. While we are healing, dear Lord, we pray for the protection of those who protect us, for our military and our firefighters and rescue personnel, our police and our frontline medical staff. Please also watch over the families of these heroes and comfort them when their loved ones perish while serving and keeping us safe. As we begin a new administration next week, we pray for success, not for Democrat success or Republican success or even American success, but for success as you define it. Dear God, God we know we're asking a lot, but we also know all things are possible through you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I have told you that I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than these? And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened 
and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next musical selection is God of the City. seriously want to thank our praise band for the awesome music and I also want to thank George for the beautiful wonderful prayer it's got me so excited that I wanted y'all to notice the prayer sign right beside me if it's okay with all of you I'm going to preach right here because if there's ever a time when we as a nation need to pray that time is now amen amen all right so the scripture that George read for us tonight John 1 starting with verse 43. And it starts out with saying that Jesus decided to go to Galilee. Now, Galilee was in the northern part of Palestine. It was on probably the um, western side of the Sea of Galilee, and it was populated by Jewish folks. So they knew Jewish history over there, 
They knew their Jewish background over there. And when he goes, he finds Philip. Jesus finds Philip. And he says to Philip, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. So the thing about Jesus going to Galilee and Galilee being uh, Jewish territory or, or where Jews lived, it's interesting that he would find Philip and then Philip would find Nathanael. And Nathanael, um, when he heard from Philip, Philip told Nathanael, we found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. So by Philip telling Nathanael, we found him of whom Moses wrote about and the prophets wrote about, that is affirming Jesus's Jewish heritage in Jewish territory to a Jewish guy named Nathanael. Okay? All right. So that's the reason why we got Jesus in Galilee. Jesus is around his own folk. Okay? All right. Who should know who he is? So when Philip tells Nathaniel all that, oh, something else I want to point out before I go on. It started out by saying Jesus found Philip, but Philip found Nathaniel. Y'all notice that? So Jesus found Philip, but Philip found Nathaniel. So that talks to me about disciple making and winning souls to Christ. Jesus knows who you are, and if he wants to come and get you and speak to you and love you and forgive you, he can. But in this world, we also have to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And so we have to go out and find others, just like one day Jesus came and found us. He found Philip. Philip found Nathaniel. They got a chain going of disciple making. Thanks be to God. All right. So Philip says, we found who Moses wrote about. We found who the prophets wrote about Jesus. And then he identifies Jesus in the way Jews identify you by your family. He said, we found Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. So he zeroed in on who Jesus was, specifically using Jesus's Jewish background and Jewish history to speak to Nathaniel. Nathaniel, hearing all of that, says to Philip, can anything good Come out of Nazareth. What? So, so let's take a look at Nazareth. Nazareth was, was slightly off the beaten path. Sometimes uh, the caravans would stop there and do a little bit of trade, but, uh, but there wasn't a whole lot going on in Nazareth. Matter of fact, in the whole Old Testament, Nazareth was probably only mentioned maybe once. So it wasn't really a city that anybody would think of as particularly significant or important. And so Nathaniel, hearing all this Jewish history, Moses wrote about this guy. Uh-huh. The prophets wrote about this guy. Mm-hmm. He's the son of Joseph. We know who he is. He's married to Mary, who's related to, and Joseph is descended from David the king. And, and here you're saying Jesus is all of that, but he's from Nazareth. What good can come out of Nazareth? Philip said these words to that question. Philip said, come and see. Notice Philip didn't get upset with him. What do you mean anything good? We're talking about Jesus. Philip didn't judge him. Philip didn't condemn him. Philip didn't try to clap back at him for saying, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip gave an invitation and said, come and see. One of the ways that we can win people to Christ is after we give our testimony and we tell them the goodness of the Lord concerning us, if they doubt and if they don't believe, they have that right. Just invite them to come and see. When they see how the Lord has transformed your life, when they see how the Lord has made you a new creature, when they see how the Lord has forgiven you, when they see the old person you used to be and the new person you are now, they will have to say only God can do that in your life. So you don't have to fight with nobody, although if you want to, put them up, put them up. <laughs> you don't have to argue with nobody. Just give the Philippian invitation. Just tell them. Come and see. And then if they do come and see you and check out your life, make sure you're living a life of godliness and holiness in Jesus Christ so that they will see Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. All right. So Jesus sees Nathaniel coming to him and he makes these remarks. He says, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. 
I can't think of anything more awesome for Jesus to say about me than to say, here is a brother who ain't trying to front, fake, or fool nobody. He's genuine and real. Can you imagine Jesus Christ saying that about you? There was something Jesus knew about Nathaniel. Nathaniel was so genuine in character that Jesus said, finally, somebody who ain't trying to be all self-important or arrogant, somebody who ain't even trying to be all judgmental, somebody who's just for real and who they are. That's a brother I can deal with and relate to. Here finally is an Israelite, one of my home folks, in whom there's no guile, no deceit. This is somebody I can work with, even if he does have his doubts. So let's see what happened. Nathaniel heard Jesus say that about him. And Nathaniel said to Jesus, I love this. Yo, you think you know me? How'd you get to know me? And Jesus said, dude, before Philip even talked to you, I saw you sitting over there under the fig tree. And Nathaniel's like, you saw me before anybody even pointed me out? You saw me before Philip even saw me? Because Philip's the one who told me to come and see. I didn't even know you was in the area. And Philip said, we found him. Now you, you saw me say, what? Then all of a sudden, Nathaniel had the big revelation. And Nathaniel proclaimed these two things about Jesus. In verse 49, Nathaniel said, Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God. And you are the king of Israel. That was Nathaniel's response when he understood that Jesus knew him before anybody even pointed him out. He said, Rabbi, you are son of God and you are king of Israel. The significance of Nathaniel proclaiming him son of God and king of Israel is son of God denotes you are the Lord from heaven and king of Israel denotes you really are the one that Moses and the prophets wrote about. So you are the real one that Philip told me you are. So just like you think I'm for real, no, 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 no. You are for real. What a testimony. Jesus looks at you and says, a person who's for real, and you look at him and say, a savior who's for real. Oh my God, there's a whole lot of real going on. I love it. All right. Now Jesus says this to Nathaniel. He says, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. He said, you think you saw something because I knew you before anybody pointed you out? You think you saw a revelation when you called me son of God and son of man or, or and, and king of Israel, even though I really am? He said, you ain't seen nothing yet. You keep following me. You stay genuine and true to me. He says, very truly, I tell you, you'll see three things, heaven open and angels ascending up and angels coming down upon me. So here's what that tells me. When he says, you will see, I'm going to put my little thing down so I can preach now. He said, you will see heaven opened, angels ascending and descending upon me, the son of man. He is saying, you will see pure holiness, pure divinity, and pure God on display. Just like you are an Israelite and who there is no deceit, and just like you proclaimed me to be son of God and king of Israel, I will show you stuff if you hold on to your faith in me that you can't believe. You'll see heaven open and angels ascending and descending upon the son of man, angels of God. So, so what that speaks to me about on this Sunday is this. The stuff that's going on in our country right now, violence, inequality, and then the things that are going on, not only in our country, but in this world with this virus. God, please get rid of this thing for us. We are seeing some horrendous things in this world right now. Anybody who has just a passing awareness of the news pretty much knows what's been going on in our world and in our country. But Jesus says this, with all that you see that's going on in this world, you keep your eyes on me in the midst of it. 
and I will show you heavenly things. I will show you holy things. And the things that I show you will be so powerful, you will see heaven open. Can you imagine that, first of all? What does it even mean that you will see heaven open? Can you even begin to imagine in your mind what that must be like, what that must look like to see heaven open? And then the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And notice in that scripture, it says the angels of God ascending. So it says ascending before descending. Okay, I got to work with that one. How on earth you see heaven open and then you see angels going up before they come down? Hmm. I'm glad you asked that question. Tell the truth. I'm not even sure what the answer is, but we're giving our best shot. That's kind of what my job is. So, I'll, you know, we'll work for this. Maybe one of the reasons why we see angels ascending before we see angels descending is because even in the midst of everything that's going on in our nation and around the world, with the violence, the unrest, with the virus and the death and the sorrow and tragedy, maybe the Lord wants somebody to know. Maybe there is a Philip or Nathaniel out there that can look through all of that, as real as it is, and can see heaven in our midst and can see that God has got his holy angels all around us and they can see heaven open and these angels are going up to God and they can see angels coming down from God right upon Jesus Christ. Now, the fact that these angels ascend and descend upon Jesus, that tells me something else. Wait till you hear this point. It tells me that the focal point of heaven's activity is Jesus Christ. The angels it's ascend and descend upon the Son of Man. That's what it said. So if they ascend and descend upon the Son of Man, then that means the Son of Man is the focal point for all the good things that heaven has for this world. And how is it that Jesus is the focal point for all the good things that heaven has for this world? Because Jesus himself came down from heaven into this world to love us, pay the price for our sins, and reconcile us back to God. The relationship is now healed. Sin broke it, and Jesus brought us right back. So the good things that God had for us, Jesus is the focal point. So that's why we see the angels descending, or excuse me, ascending and descending upon Jesus Christ. Everything we need from heaven, everything we can receive from heaven, it is funneled to us through Jesus Christ. The thing I like about that is this. Jesus was here, not only here with us, but here on this earth as one of us. So see the connection here. When we call on Jesus Christ for whatever it is that we need, we're not calling on a far off entity who sits high up in heaven somewhere, who kind of knows us because, well, maybe he's all powerful. No, we're calling on somebody who was one of us, who was here with us. So he knows us personally and knows us through and through. He knows what the young folk go through. He knows what the little bitty babies go through. He knows what us middle aged okay, he knows what the middle aged folk go through. And he knows what us senior folk go through too. He knows what the mommies and the daddies and the birds and the bees go through because he was here. So I have confidence in Jesus Christ that when I call on him and when I need him, he hears and he understands what my plea is because he was human just like me. Not only was he human just like me, but he was also, as Philip said, or excuse me, as Nathaniel said, he was also son of God. So. Jesus knows me in two ways. He knows me because he was human like me, and he knows me because he's son of God. So he knows everything as son of God, and he knows you and I personally in our humanity. So that means we can trust Jesus totally with our here and now, and we can trust Jesus with our hereafter and our eternity and our future. How about that? Somebody who knows the here and now, somebody who knows the thereafter, we can put our complete trust in him because he is from thereafter, but he was here and now in the flesh out, just like you and I. Thanks be to God, we have a savior that we can trust because he knows both the heaven side and the earth side. He knows the ascending and he knows the descending. So in this day and time, here's my plea in this message. Dear God, open up your heaven. 
just like Jesus said you would in this passage. And whatever it is you see that we stand in need of in your world, send it on down. Lord, right now in your world, send down your healing. Send down your forgiveness. Lord, right now we need your peace. Right now, God, we need strength to make it just one more day. Right now, God, we need unity where there is division. Open up heaven and send it on down. Lord, will you please send down forgiveness so our hearts will learn to walk in forgiveness with one another. Lord, will you please send down righteousness, send down holiness, send down people doing goodness and kindness to one another. Send down holiness that heals hearts, holiness that helps people walk with one another as brothers and sisters and as family. God, out with the bad, in with the good, out with the ugly, in with the holy, out with the wrong and in with the right. Open up your heaven, Lord, and send it on down. We need you, Lord, right now. We can't wait till tomorrow. We can't wait till next week because as we have seen, stuff on this earth can turn on a dime and anything can hit us at any time. But God, you are holy. You are above and you are here right now. Send it on down, God, your goodness and your light and let it be the salve for our eyes. Let it be the ointment for our burns. Let it be the vitamin C, B, D, and A that strengthens us, helps us stand up and be counted as people who walk in the light and love of God. Open up heaven and send it on down. Don't just let Nathaniel see it. Let me see it. Let you see it. Let my brother see it. Let my sister see it. Let the children see it. I'm glad that you showed it to Nathaniel. Now, right now, show it to the rest of us. God, show it to the scientists who are working to get rid of COVID. God, show it to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Show it to the Capitol. Show it to the preachers and the teachers. Show it to the children in the schools. God, open your heaven right now and let us see your goodness. Let us see your way. You are the way out of this. You are the way through this. Open it up, Lord, and send it down. Now is no time to keep heaven closed. Open it. Nathaniel, you told him, I will open heaven and show you holy things going up and coming down. It's time, God. It is time. Send it, send it, send it, because we, your people, need it. Send it on down in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for blessing us with your presence here at our service today. And special thanks to those who have continued to give up their time, treasure, and talents to enable our church to carry on its many ministries. If you are able and would like to help support our ministries, you can donate through our website, hopemountcarmel.org, or by mail to 9411 Baltimore Road, Frederick 21704. To get to know more about Mount Carmel, or if you are interested in baptism, membership, would like to assist in any of our ministries, there is a wealth of information on our website. You may also call our church office at 301-662-1303 or email donna.clawson at hopemountcarmel.org. We hope you will join us again next week. You can either tune in as you did today or visit us via a Zoom facilitated live service on Sunday at 11 a.m. Please contact the church office for a link. If you know anyone who might be interested in our services, please share our contact information with them. Thanks again and have a great week. Rolling <laughs> and composure. Something has changed and it's like, mm -hmm. uh, but I can't change it because they've already. Oh, you're not. <laughs> I'm still learning his dry sarcasm. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whenever you guys are ready, go ahead. I got a lot of extra blooper content, just so you know.